Hello, I think we've got an interesting one for you today. It's what is the best actual placement for thermal pads on your uh, NVMEs? So let me show you what the plan is and then I'll show you the science. So primary heat generator component is right here, secondary there, and then the NAND generally doesn't put off as much heat because they tend to run at much lower power. But this leads into, do you need to cool it? So this came with one large thermal pad. This external enclosure came with one thermal pad and you know you place it over the whole thing, it distributes heat over everything. So the heat would actually go into the, ther into the NAND and is that the proper way to do it? Well, there's lots of videos, but we're gonna get into how the testing is being done. So I have two extra um, heat spreaders. I just have this simple copper plate. This is kind of representative of the cheaper ones that you see on the market. And then I have this finned one, which kind of is more represented by the fancier ones. The testing, one whole one, and then I cut it, that same one after I did all the testing. I'm not completely covering the controller. It was actually covered the controller in the test. So that's option two. So now heat can't transmit directly from, from the controller to the NAND via the thermal pad. Last test is done like this, where it's just covering there. And then I added one final one for while this was on there, I added a fan blowing on it, which is represented of, of more like the uh, liquid cooled NAND, um, NAND coolers, or not NAND coolers, NVMe coolers. And to measure the temperature of the NAND, this one does not have a temperature probe inside the NAND, so I can't get temperature readings. I just used a thermal measuring device. It just plugs into the motherboard and I get a temperature reading. I just kind of stuck it onto the last one. So let's transition to the science. Okay, so this is the science of what we're kind of talking about. I have some notes up here. So the controller maximum temperature on most NVMEs is like 70 degrees C. The NAND temperature range is zero to 70 degrees C. Uh, the higher the temperature, the, no, we're, I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. Let's go over what this is. So heat creating, you've got a heat generating component, this heat generating component, and as you move further away from it, it gets colder. So what you do is you've got heat going into the thermal pad and it's spreading across the yellow and if the thermal pad is warmer than the NAND, then heat is gonna go from the thermal pad into the NAND as well as into the heat sink because the heat is always gonna to flow to a cooler area. So if the NAND is warmer, it would flow up and out. So this does depend on how that works. Uh, NAND flash is relatively cool. So what we'll result if it runs hotter? This is the theory. Uh, let's take a look at the next scenario. So now let's split the thermal pad in half, or in my case, three. So we got the heat journey component. It goes up into the thermal pad. It can no longer directly transmit through that thermal pad. So now it has to go up through the heat sink. If the air, this thermal pad is at a lower temperature than the heat sink, it'll transmit down through the thermal pad and into the NAND once again. But if the NAND is warmer, causing this to be warmer, the heat will transmit into the heat sink, cooling it off. So it could work in either way, depending on how, uh, what is going on. So that is, again, what we're gonna be investigating, and this is scenario number two. And then last, this is the third scenario. We got the generating components, it goes up into the thermal pad, there's no thermal pad over the NAND, so it is able to do whatever it's gonna be able to do running at its its quote unquote optimal temperatures or whatever it's going to choose to run at. And if it were to get, let's say, too warm and have to throttle, thermal throttle, I guess, it would go ahead and do that itself. And then the heat transmits through the pad, through the heat sink, and doing whatever it likes. Okay, I know this is a wall of text. Go ahead and pause if you actually want to read through it. So, data retention. Uh, for how long you want the data to be stored on SSD, you want lower temperatures. It can last about uh, a full year at 40 degrees C or cooler. It died well at 85 degrees C, data loss happens in just two days. So uh, conversely, for operating performance and behavior, you actually want it to operate at higher temperatures so that 85 degrees C when in operation, 
because then it's easier for the bits to move around. But because it's powered, it's not going to lose any data unless it gets way too hot. While if it's colder, it's harder for it to electrically charge the bits, so it has to drive the NAND harder in order for it to do it, which causes additional wear on it. Uh, my source on this text is from Gamers Nexus. Here's the follow-up. So my thing here was, okay, we have a lot of talk, but no one, I didn't really find any uh, testing. Okay, so I ran a lot of test scenarios. Three scenarios, or three, three thermal pad conditions across uh, three, three scenarios. So, you know, full plate, full coverage, controller temperature only, uh, running Crystal Disk Mark at uh, 32, 32 gigs and letting it run the full test. So this is the full test and the bottom here is time. While the vertical here is temperature, see that. Controller's best temperature is under 60 degrees C. There are no real concerns. This is operating at USB uh, Gen 2 by 2 speeds. So the SSD was never going to quite get its choice maximum because it wasn't operating at uh, PCI X 3 by 4 speeds. Whew, okay, so we got plate temperature with a fully covered pad. That's this orange solid line right here. So it started off a little bit warmer and it climbed, climbed, climbed. Um, then we have the plate with controller split. So that would be the three different pads. That's this yellow line, do, 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 do. Climbed, peaked the highest before it dropped down towards the end. And those were the random, I think the randoms. And then we got the red line where it's the dash dot dash. And that one is just covering the controller. And it spiked almost as high and dropped more quickly. So what is that leading us to lead me to believe? It means that having less thermal pad coverage means that there's less room for it to spread out so that your controller has the potential to get warmer on a plate style. Does that hold true for the thin styled heat sinks? So first the solid green line and it spiked the highest of that style. And then if we take a look at the split, well it follows a very similar trend to the thin uh, full coverage while the controller only had the lowest temperature of those. So this differentiates itself from that solid plate. So having any sort of fin type structure over it, um, it looks like it's leaning towards controller only. And if we add a fan on top of it, well, that, that conquers all. The controller do only does the best, followed by the split, followed by uh, the, uh, the full coverage. So I tried to keep it as consistent as possible. I'll show the raw data towards the end of the video. Uh, crystal disk mark, the NAND temperatures. Again, this was sticking that uh, thermal couple to uh, to the last NAND. So in theory, you uh, you get a reduction in performance at o when temperatures are uh, under 40 degrees C on NAND. That's just kind of the cutoff that I arbitrarily chose. Okay, so with the plate, the plate, all of them got up the hottest and they had the highest climb so uh, they had the highest operating temperatures more in line with kind of what I'm calling out over here best between temperatures uh, then the fins and the worst quote worst would be actively cooled we're going to say all of them did pretty poorly so having just the fins they didn't get quite as warm and having only the the controller uh the NAND actually stayed at a lower temperature. So this means the heat was going into the plate, the, the cooler, and then transmitting down into the NAND. So I'm going to explain more after we get through uh, all the tests. Okay, so let's simplify it. So this is just taking uh, each of the runs. So I've got the copper fins uh, with fan, 
controller pad only. So then we have the split and then full. That is just how it names. And then they'll have the with fan, without without fan, doesn't have fan in it. And then plate is just that solid plate. It's got the read speed, the write speed. So the NAND temperature is going to mostly affect the write performance. And right off the bat, we can clearly see that the write performance is very random. However, in general, we see that when it's a little bit warmer, it performs slightly better, but it's also within run-to-run -run variance. Keep in mind, my lowest temperature was 35 degrees C at the NAND. And its performance was better than some of my warmer temperatures. So we're seeing a trend of it doesn't really matter. It doesn't mean that low temperatures for NAND is good for it because it's actually the opposite. Two low temperatures are actually bad for that read-write performance because it has to input more voltage to have that, that boost in performance. So it could be causing extra wear. I can't test that. And then over here, we have the delta temperature. So that is the change in temperature that we saw because uh, just in case over here, that starting temperature had an effect on it, just in case I have the delta temperature. And uh, that copper plate had the biggest deltas. Okay, next I did a write test. So I have a 46 gig folder, uh, one like 20 gig movie and three eight gig movies that I just use in a copy test. Uh, this is the speed swing I saw and some of them were like the scray line basically completely flat. Why is having this behavior? Not completely sure. It could be because the controller chip not on the SSD external enclosure was getting too warm and it may cause that fluctuation to it of itself. Anyways, outside of what I can test. Okay, controller temperatures over time. Again, I did color groupings. Uh, hopefully it's clear enough. Plate full contact right there, climbing up. The higher temperature was when it was split. And the plate with just the controller covered is the orange circles right here. And it's set right in line with the fins split. When the fins were full contact, it was this yellow line right there. You can see that it's slow, steady climb with just the controller covered, not quite reaching the same peaks. And then with active cooling, everything stays really nice and cold on that controller. When we take a look at the temperatures of the NAND, well, the warmest one is with uh, the plate with the split, ironically enough. Data was lost with a full coverage plate, unfortunately. Uh, I do apologize for that. I just did not have time to go back. Uh, the fin split is sitting right there. Then we have the fins full coverage sitting slightly cooler than the split. Uh, this green one is the fins con controller only NAND temperature, and it's sitting a little bit underneath. And then we have plate only controller actually sitting right there. Is that right? Yes, it is. And then at the bottom, we have the green ones that have the active cooling. They level out really quickly. So doo -doo -doo -doo. okay, simplified view. We have the copper fins with fan controller split full then just the fins with controller split full and then the plate with controller split full working our way from the top to the bottom. So the warmest controller belong to the, the copper fins uh, full coverage. Um, the warmest NAND belongs to the copper plate full cover or actually split coverage. But uh, you can see by the right performance, they're all very similar. They're, they're in their margin of error. So that temperature did not really affect it um, in any meaningful way. And then once again, we have the delta temperature. Okay, this is the last one and probably the most difficult to look at. Uh, 
I took data recording from the entire run of the storage 3D Mark, uh, all 23 minutes, minutes of it, uh, to measure the change in temperature. So this is the change in temperature of the controller. Um, I'll let you read through it. I think I got the colors enough and uh, the line type differentiate enough that it's easy enough to take a look at, but the trends are more or less the same on that controller. On the storage front, so the NAND, um, once again, it lining up almost exactly the same way as we previously would have expected. Uh, with the split and the controller only sitting at the top, being the, meaning the warmest temperatures, having the fins, well, the uh, the full coverage is operating warmer than splitting it or just covering the controller itself. And if we take a look at the previous one, the controller temperatures, so there aren't really any warning signs of uh, just covering the, the NAND, or not the NAND, the controller uh, only as opposed to covering the whole thing. We're not seeing any crazy spikes. And then the coolest temperatures are guns again with active cooling. So then simplified view, max temperature, the delta in temperature um, as opposed to temperature over time, and the score that was achieved during the test, and the uh, whatever it said for the height performance of the SSD during that test. And there is no direct correlation between the speed of the drive and the temperatures of anything. Mind the controller was all within temperature and the NAND was, it fluctuated actually quite a lot in, in, in temperature uh, but from one test to the next, but it, it never reached ridiculously cold temperatures and never reached ridiculously high temperatures and the delta okay this is the raw data and i just want to like talk for a minute while this raw data is up so what does all this mean uh with direct cooling so i'm going to say if you have a liquid cooled so one of those liquid cooled you would have it in uh your custom liquid cooling systems if you're liquid cooling your nvme Cut that thermal pad off. Let the let the NAND be separate. I just think the active cooling makes it too cold, and you're probably overdriving that NAND's voltage. If you have any of these metal ones, unless there's like a direct fan over top of it, like there are uh, certain uh, coolers for NAND that have uh, a fan directly on it, you probably want to chop that uh, thermal pad off and just let that part be separate. But if you just have it's a, if it's basically just a metal plate or a metal plate with fins, you're fine. Let the whole thing be covered. It it doesn't affect the temperatures that much. It's not hurting anything. It's not helping anything. It's only with the actively cooled ones that you probably want to have that separation. That is what I got from all this. Um, again, I made it because I was like, hey, am I actually applying this properly? And is it going to affect anything? And, you know, conspiracy theories out there are like, yes, it does. And other people are like, no, it doesn't. You're fine. Just do it that way. So uh, I decided to just do the test and be done with it. So uh, I hope you all enjoyed this one-off video. Each uh, 3D Mark run took 23 minutes. So, uh, you know, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I had to rerun the test uh, three more times because I uh, I noticed the thermal pe the the temperature sensor had become detached, so this took a lot of time of testing. Anyways, uh, if you like this type of content, please let me know. If you had other strange ideas for things I can possibly test, let me know. If you got ideas on ways I can improve the videos, I'm open to that constructive criticism. This is a one-off. I am. Uh, I'm knowledgeable on thermal engineering, but I am not an expert on thermal engineering. Uh, so, it's a one-off. Anyways, uh, I hope you all have a great day, and I hope you join me next time on Computer Tech and More.